Yo, yo, que la que hay toda mi gente bella del mundo de YouTube. Te hablan mi club, one person, los perros, motoclub. Mother chapter, Virginia. Out here today, gonna speak on a subject very near and dear to my heart. Something that I feel personally is negatively affecting the culture and has been for the past several years. And uh, that is the term dominant. All right. The word dominant, referring to dominant clubs or whatever, is a term that I don't use. You're never going to see me using the term dominant motorcycle club or the dom or dommy or what, any of that shit. I don't say. For a number of reasons, man. You know, number one, it's cop speak. That's where it originally comes from, is law enforcement. All right? A lot of people don't know that or fail to recognize that, but it's the truth. The first people to refer to a club as the dominant club in the area, they don't see club. They say gang, the dominant motorcycle gang in the area. All right? That's where that originally comes from is the cops. And I think that the reason that it creeped its way on over into our world is the simple fact that uh, people like to have answers to questions. People like to have organization. You know, the way the brain works is through what's called synapses, okay? The brain sends an electronic signal, a signal of electricity from point A to point B, right? Okay? There's receptors. One receptor shoots electricity and the other receptor receives it, right? So that's why a lot of people have a real hard time understanding concepts such as true freedom in the MC world, right? The philosophy of the one percenter, true freedom. That's where that old phrase, for those that understand, no explanation is needed. For those that don't understand, no explanation is possible, right? That's where that comes from. Because for those of us that respect and understand true freedom and the fact that there is no answer to the question, right? The fact that true freedom is a wide open philosophy. It's got a whole lot of open-ended variables, right? Questions with no answers to them, okay? For those of us that get that, that's your true one percenters. People that are able to wrap their head around true freedom. Those that don't get it, they come up with shit like this, the dominant. It's, it's coming up with an answer to a question that shouldn't have an answer, okay? It's adding an organizational chart to something that shouldn't be that organized. We're talking about true freedom, right? So I think that's where, you know, this, this term that originally came from law enforcement, uh, figuring out ways to, uh, you know, build their little Venn diagrams and figure out what clubs were where and what clubs were doing what, you know, they came up with this term dominant to put on their little maps and, you know, some, somebody who was in an interrogation room at, at some point or whatever, some way, somehow it got carried over from law enforcement into the clubs. Okay. And, you know, that's the number one reason that I, I don't use it. That's one of the reasons. The second reason I don't use the term dominant is because it just don't sound right, man. Sounds like some Pulp Fiction, Gimp, and Zed type shit, man. What, what kind of a man calls another man his dominant? He's my dominant. Uh-uh. <laughs> I ain't with that party, bro. <laughs> I ain't doing it. It just don't sound right, you know? He's my dominant. Let me talk to my dom. <laughs> uh-uh. All right, but th that's all, you know, stuff that's not that important. You know, they, yeah, there are valid reasons and everything, but the, the true reason behind the, the fact that I won't use or condone or recognize the term dominant motorcycle club is because of the harm that it is and has been causing to this culture 
since people started using it, okay? Uh, number one, it's, how do I put this? It's misleading, right? It's very misleading because the way people say it and use that term would lead one to believe that it's a very cut and dry super organized thing where each state has one club that is the dominant and that is the club that sits at the head of the table and makes all the big decisions and as long as you're good with them everything is a-okay and you just make it right with the dom and everything's going to be a-okay the dom will have the ultimate say because nobody ever opposes them and everything is just hunky-dory the dom right it's very misleading, you know, because the reality of the situation is that most people don't even have a clear understanding. I, there's clubs out there that feel like it's a, like 1% or something, you know, like it's some kind of a, a type of club. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, people have told me that shit. I've had young guys that are in clubs and just because the club has been around a while they're like yeah we're a dominant club <laughs> we're a dominant yeah as long as you're a dominant you can do this that and the third we're a dominant <laughs> you guys should be a dominant are you guys a dominant <laughs> you know and it, there's a lot of people that generally genuinely do not have a clear understanding of what it means and you know what it's supposed to mean. So what ends up happening is you've got a lot of clubs claiming to be the dominant all in one area. And that's where the violence comes from, you know, a lot of the time. Um, because then what ends up happening is these guys, these clubs, and it's not always just young guys either. It's, it's people that generally have less than 20 years wearing the same patch, right? The guys that have 15, 20, 25, 30 years wearing the same patch are generally not going to be your troublemakers out there causing these problems and violence and shit. It's generally guys, doesn't matter how old they are, that have, you know, five or fewer years in the patch that they're in, right? maybe 10 or less, you know, very rarely are you going to run into guys that have, you know, 20 plus years in a club that are out there trying to play patch police and shit like that. Um, you know, because they, they get it. They are people that have been around so long that they do understand the philosophy of the one percenter. Right. Um, but what ends up happening is you get these guys that are out there, they, they feel like they have been given the green light to be out there playing patch police, okay? They, they feel like because they have labeled themselves a dominant club, that gives them the right to run around checking people. And this is a world of apex warriors, right? Apex fraternities, okay, top shelf, top tier male organizations on par with, you know, Cosa Nostra, the IRA, prison organizations, any top tier fraternal organizations, okay, that's what this culture is as well. That doesn't make it criminal, okay, but it is a top tier fraternal society. Okay, or culture, or whatever you want to call it. Culture is a better term. It's not, a, I don't feel like it's a society. It's a culture. Okay, yeah, but it is, you know, top tier, upper echelon, fraternal culture. And in any upper echelon fraternal culture, respect is paramount. Okay, so when you've got a guy that feels he is owed respect because he's not out there messing with anybody, okay? He's a good dude, you know? The, the general law in any top shelf fraternal culture is 
act like an asshole, get treated like an asshole. You know, be cool, you'll get treated cool. So when you got a guy that's out there minding his business, staying in his own lane, being cool, not fucking with anybody, and you got some other guy that rolls up on him that feels that he has a green light to be out there regulating, checking people and shit, how is that not going to end in violence? You know, your favorite biker, as my dude, man, good creator. That is somebody you should listen to and follow, your favorite biker. One thing that he said that I rock with real hard, man, he, he made this video called The Common Denominator. And it's something I've been saying for a long fucking time, man. You know, and it's the truth. The common denominator in the vast majority of violence in the club world is those guys. Some guy that feels like he has the right to be out there checking people. That's where the majority of violence starts. Is some guy that himself or somebody else has told him he's part of the dominant, right? And because of that, he now has a green light to be out there regulating and checking people, trying to take people's property, trying to threaten people, you know? And I don't care who you are, man. We're men first. You roll up on any man that's a real man with that bullshit, the response is going to be violence, right? And, you know, some numbskull made a, uh, like, a response video about me or some shit. I, you know, ridiculous. I, I haven't even, not even going to give it a response. But he tried to say in this video that MC culture of today is just hunky-dory. There's no problems. Any, any violence out there is just young clubs trying to make a name for themselves. You know, it ain't nothing. There's no problem. Only that's not true. <laughs> this has been the most violent year to date. Okay? Just because people aren't out there doing the same type of violence as they did in the 70s where they're chucking full gas cans with, with a fucking rag lit on fire hanging out of it at a clubhouse, shit like that. That does not mean that the death count, the death toll, is not higher and higher as time goes on, okay? And it is. I mean, there's, there's just been violent incident after incident after incident over the past year, man. And it does not appear to be getting any better. It appears to be getting worse and worse. And, uh, I mean, there's, that's the common denominator, is this, this idea that certain individuals and certain clubs have the right to be out there riding around, rolling around, place to place, gas station to gas station, other clubs, clubhouses, for heaven's sake. These, some of these cats roll around just barging into other clubs, clubhouses, right? And playing patch police on people that were invited there. I heard of a situation not, not too far back where some people I have a world of respect for got invited to a party, they go to the party, and some club rolls up on them playing that tough guy shit. You know, trying to, trying to check them, trying to take patches and shit like that. They're like, hold on, man. We got invited here to this party, you know, and this club who's not even, it's not even their clubhouse has rolled in here and is analyzing our patches. You know, we're not even from this state. And I'm not talking, it's not me and my club. This happened to another club that I have a lot of respect for. You know, they got invited to a party, went to the party, and out of nowhere, a couple guys from some club roll in trying to regulate on people. Like it's their job, like they're the... The appointed fucking, like the health department or something. You know what I mean? Like, like the health department rolling into a restaurant. You know, taking a look at all the stoves and the sinks and shit. They're walking around analyzing everybody's sets of colors. It's insane. 
It's, it goes against everything this culture is supposed to be about, okay? We are supposed to be a culture of respect. You can't ask respect of people unless you are giving that respect, unless you are cultivating a culture of respect, okay? How, how can you ask respect of people when you're rolling around doing shit like that? How can you expect people to give you respect when you are running around acting like an asshole? Act like an asshole, get treated like an asshole. Be cool, you get treated cool. It's that simple, man. And that is my message. That has always been my message from day one. <laughs> okay? Is as a major legendary club, you don't have to be out there doing that shit. You know? You're not going to force loyalty. You cannot force loyalty. You must inspire loyalty. That's my message, man. That's always been my message. And this, this idea of this term dominant, right? It, that It's problematic. It's only going to cause more and more issues. You cannot be out there having clubs declaring themselves the king of the local area and, and not see violence come from that, right? It's, it's impossible, you know, unless, you know, I, look, I'm not saying don't have your set or community or whatever you want to call it where, you know, there's a calendar and it's all organized. This club has an event this day, all that shit that people are trying to accomplish with the whole idea of the set and all that stuff. I'm not saying don't do that. You, sh you can do that. Have at it. But don't be out there trying to enforce the, the regulations you've come up with with this, this idea of a set and a dominant and all this shit. Don't be out there trying to enforce it under threat of violence. People need to sign up for it if they want to be part of it. Period. That's, that's going to solve the problem. If we could all embrace that right there, that would solve the entire fucking problem. Mark my words. So that's how I feel about the term dominant. Um, you're never going to see me use that term. You know, when I'm talking clubs with anybody, you're not going to hear me use the term dominant. When I am referring to a club that is an older, major club, that deserves the utmost respect, that has been in an area for a very long time, I'll use a lot of different terms, okay? But dominant ain't one of them, right? You know, the larger club in an area, the big club in the area, uh, legendary club in the area, you know, the club that has been in an area for the longest time, shit like that. I mean, I'll use a whole lot of terms. But I ain't calling them dominant. I won't do it. And I don't think you should either. You know? I'm not telling people to go out there being disrespectful, saying you're not the dominant or whatever. I'm saying the fewer people that embrace this shit, the fewer people that are out there using these terms, the better. And the sooner people stop using the term dominant, the sooner its negative effects will lessen.